All right, in this video, I'm gonna be removing a firmware password on this mid-2012 Apple MacBook Pro. Now, I actually got this machine off eBay for about $175 or so, and uh, it ended up being fully functional when I got it. However, uh, after putting it all back together, repasting it and whatnot, I turned it on with a hard drive connected, and I found out that it actually has a firmware password. So I'll go ahead and plug it in and turn it on and show you that now. All right, so you can see the machine works just fine. Uh, I am holding down the option key as you can see. And uh, in a second here, you will see that there is a firmware password on this machine. So basically what we're gonna be doing in this video is uh, I'm gonna be desoldering the EEPROM from this MacBook logic board. Uh, I'm gonna put it in my EEPROM programmer and either do one of two things. Either A, I will take a dump from another mid-2012 15-inch MacBook Pro logic board and just write it on to the EEPROM on this machine, or I will attempt to look through the uh, dump, find the password, and remove it. I think that's possible, I'm not 100% sure. So uh, one way or another, we will be removing the uh, firmware password from this machine. And uh, so yeah, so I guess I'll just get started by removing uh, the EEPROM from this logic board. And uh, then we'll go through the process of attempting to remove the password. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, I will be right back. All right, so I've now uh, gotten the board out and uh, the EEPROM is right there as you can see. Uh, so this is what we're gonna be removing. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is, of course, turn on my hot air station here. Uh, let that warm up a little bit here. And uh, while that's warming up, I'll go ahead and apply some flux to the chip. Alright, and then all we need to do from here is heat it up and remove it. Turn down the uh, air a little bit here. Alright, so you can see the chip is now off the board. Uh, so now I'll go ahead and pause the video here and uh, resume it on my computer and show you what to do or I should go over the process of editing the dump of the EEPROM and uh, flashing it back on the chip. Uh, so I'll be right back. Alright, so you can see I have my EEPROM programmer right here and uh, I actually have this little adapter uh, for it right there so I can just uh, clip in uh, the uh, chip from the MacBook logic board. I don't know why it's not focusing. But yeah, you can just push it down, you can see that it opens up, and uh, then it'll just clamp down on the legs of the chip and allow the EEPROM programmer to read it. Now, I just got this off eBay quite a while ago, actually, uh, but it does work perfectly fine. And uh, you can see I've got the software open on my computer right here. Um, this is, no. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is go to the device thing, and actually... Yeah, you want to do uh, the 25 flash detect so it can uh, detect which type of IC is in the socket. So you can see it gives me a few options here. So I think the one in there is a MX25L646E. Um, there are a few options for it here, but I'm not exactly sure which it is. I'm sure any of them will work just fine, probably this one. Uh, so go ahead and select select. And uh, you can see that it uh, will detect here. And now what we have to do is go to the device and read it. And this will dump uh, the EEPROM, obviously, from, uh, or it will dump it to a file on your computer. So go ahead and select read, and select read. So you can see that it appears to be working. And on the EEPROM programmer here, you can see the orange light has come on, indicating that it is reading. So this sh should take uh, a few minutes to complete, so I'll go ahead and resume the video when it's done. All right, so you can see that the EEPROM programmer successfully read the EEPROM. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and close that. 
and uh, you can see the entire dump right here. Now what we want to do is do File, Save, and we're going to save it as uh, a bin file. So we're going to name it um, 2012 for original, and uh, we'll go ahead and select Save. All right, so you can see the file right here. And I believe this is an 8 megabyte EEPROM, so this should be about 8 megs in size, as you can see it is right there. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and make a copy of it. And I'm going to name this... Edited. Just so I know the... Uh, um, just so I uh, you know, have a backup, so if something does go wrong I can just uh, uh, you know reflash the original firmware so now what we're going to go ahead and do is open a hex editor so in my case I'm using HXD so now we're going to just go ahead and open that file so go ahead and edit uh, open the edit one and uh, now what we're going to want to do is search for a string so go ahead and find it here and it is dollar sign SVS just like that and uh, this will indicate or where this string is located is where the uh, firmware password uh, in theory should be located so we'll go ahead and search for that and uh, so here's the first instance as you can see now there should be about two instances of it so let's search it again and uh, it looks like there was only one instance Unless there's something I need to do here to search the next one. Oh, here we go. Find again. Okay, so there's the second instance. Obviously, we don't have to mess with this one. Um, so, what we're going to go ahead and do here is, first off, keep note of, or first off, we need to make sure that we do not change the file size. So, it's very important that you don't change the file size here. So we're going to go ahead and highlight all of this, and we're just going to replace it all with F. So um, I believe, I'm not exactly sure how to do it on this. Let's see. Here we go. So let's get that to FF, press OK. All right, so you can see it changed that entire uh, area of data to all Fs, which is uh, obviously blank. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is save it. And now let's go ahead and check the file size and ensure that it's still 8 megs. And as you can see, it is. And we can just go ahead and compare it with the original and make sure that the byte count is exactly the same. And as you can see, they are. So now what we should be able to do is go ahead back to the EEPROM programmer software, um, open the edited file. So we'll go ahead and search for that here. All right, so here's the one I edited. Go ahead and open it. Uh, go ahead and select OK on this. And now we should go to device. And first off, we want to select erase. So go ahead and erase the chip first, which should only take a few minutes or not even a minute, just a few seconds here. All right, and as you can see, the erase was successful, so we'll go ahead and close that. And now we will go ahead and select Program. Um, go ahead and select it there. And now it is writing the modified uh, dump onto the EEPROM once again. So, in theory, once this is complete, we should be able to resolder the EEPROM back into the MacBook logic board, put the logic board back in the chassis, and it should no longer have a uh, firmware password. So, once this completes, I'll go ahead and show you the process of soldering the EEPROM back on, and from there, we'll go ahead and test it. So, I will be right back. Alright, so I've gotten the chip ready to be resoldered back to the logic board. Uh, so we've got my hot air gun heating up right here. Um, so I'm going to go at, ahead and add a little bit of flux to this, just so it flows a little bit better. Alright, 
And now we we'll go ahead and place on the chip and then uh, heat up the pads and solder it to the board. Let's go ahead and place it right there. And let's make sure it's in the middle here. And we'll solder it in. All right, so there we go. The EEPROM has now been resoldered onto the logic board. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the board back in the chassis of the machine, turn it on, and see if there is no longer a firmware password. So I will be right back. All right, so I've gone ahead and reassembled the machine, as you can see. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it turns on and has no firmware password. Alright, so the machine's on. Not sure why the MagSafe light didn't come on. Probably the sense pin just didn't connect. But look at that. As you can see, there is no more firmware password, and we can now boot from that hard disk. So uh, I'll go ahead and let this boot up real fast, and uh, then we can take a look at the system, and uh, yeah, now that the firmware password has been removed. Uh, so I'll be right back once the machine boots up. Alright, so as you can see, the machine has just finished booting up and uh, it appears to be working perfectly fine. So you can see uh, uh, everything seems to be working. Trackpad, keyboard works. Um, and uh, yeah, here are the specs. You can see it has a 2.3 GHz quad-core Intel Core i7 CPU. Um, it does have dedicated video as well as the Intel HD Graphics 4000. Uh, it also has the GeForce GT 650M uh, as shown right there. Um, but yeah, this machine appears to be working perfectly fine, um, and uh, yeah, it works fine since I removed the firmware password. So that is how to remove the firmware password from a MacBook Pro. Now keep in mind, you only need to do this on the later MacBook Pros. Uh, on the earlier ones, you can just take out one memory module or something, and then just reset the PRAM three times, and that'll get rid of the uh, firmware password on those older machines. But um, yeah, as you can see, I was successful in removing it on this machine uh, just simply by removing that hex string or that string in the uh, hex dump of this ROM. So that has been the removal of um, the firmware password from this mid-2012 15-inch Apple MacBook Pro. Hope you enjoyed this video.